I got to scrub in, I learned more about EMT than I would in any lecture ever. And I actually saw a code blue. The cool part about medical school is that you can go and observe any doctor. All they have to do is say yes. Over the course of the last year, I spent my time shadowing around 15 different doctors from various different specialties. I thought it'd be helpful to talk about my experiences so I can look back at this when I'm deciding what to do and also for all of you out there. Let's start with the basics. What is ENT surgery? According to the Cleveland Clinic, an otolaryngologist or ENT is a healthcare specialist who treats conditions affecting your ears, nose, and throat. Otolaryngologist is a really long and hard word, so let's just stick to ENT. Otolaryngologist. Otolaryngologist. Within ENT, there are further subspecialties, but today I'm just going to be talking about one head and neck surgery. Every doctor within ENT has a different practice, but generally speaking, there are some procedures that they do more than others. These are the bread and butter cases. So for example, some of the common cases for a head and neck surgeon are when they remove your tonsils, when they remove pressure from your ear and put in ear tubes, when they take out cancers in the parotid gland or in the thyroid gland, and things to do with your nose like a septoplasty. The more complex cases get pretty intense because you can even do full reconstructions as an ENT surgeon. My experience was highly positive. I got to scrub in, I learned more about ENT than I would in any lecture ever, and I actually saw a code blue. More on that later. Bear in mind, I was only shadowing for about six hours, so this isn't a holistic perspective, it's more my first impression of the specialty. Something I really liked about the surgeries is how quick they were. Generally speaking, patients were in and out of the room in 30 minutes. When I asked the anesthesiologist how long the sedation lasts after the surgery, they also said that the patients generally wake up within a few minutes of the surgery finishing. I like that part as well. Moreover, this is an anatomy heavy specialty where you really need to know your anatomy because there are some very important structures you can't just cut off or nick while you're doing the surgery. I really enjoyed this part, but you also have to be really good and make sure you read up on the cases before your shadowing experience in case your preceptor pimps you. I'll put up a diagram here in case any of you want to get started. I don't know if this is just me being dumb, but I never fully understood how you could hear when you have ear tubes placed inside your eardrum. There's a literal hole inside your eardrum. Turns out the tube is extremely small. Also, it falls out by itself within 18 to 24 months and actually moves with your eardrum. The variety ENT provides is also significant. You can choose to have a practice where you can do the cases I mentioned earlier, but you can also do more complex cases by subspecializing and doing more fellowships. This way you could work with robotic surgery and more state-of-the-art technologies that are coming into the ENT field. Many specialties have a narrow scope of procedures, but ENT is certainly not one of them. Another super intuitive fact that the surgeon told me was that the skin in your ear sheds so that it pushes everything out of your ear canal. Let me explain this in simple terms. Let's say you took a pen and put a dot on your eardrum. In a few days, that dot would actually migrate to the outside of your ear. This is also partly why you shouldn't be using Q-tips. Lastly, there are very few specialties where you can treat kids and adults at the same time. Generally, you specialize in pediatrics or in adult medicine. However, in ENT, you have the ability to practice with kids and with adults. This brightens up your day and also provides variety. This is hard because I'm someone who's liked every single specialty I've shadowed so far. However, for the sake of the video, I have to mention a few cons. The one thing most people have a problem with in surgery is the work-life balance. The surgeon I was shadowing actually has a pretty manageable lifestyle, but that's more the exception rather than the norm. At least in Canada, your hospital and your workplace makes a big difference on how your hours are going to be and therefore how your lifestyle is going to be. For example, let's say you're at a big hospital where you have 10 ENT surgeons. That means you're on call one in 10 days. However, if you're at a smaller hospital where there are only three ENT surgeons, then you're going to be on call one in three days. This is an exponentially more hectic schedule than the 10 day hospital. You can't really control where you're going to get a job because you have to check for openings when you graduate. Therefore, you really don't know what your schedule will look like until you secure a position. Despite the scary revelation, I'll defer to what the surgeon said to me when I asked him this very question. He said that even though lifestyle and employment are considerations that must be made when you're making this decision, 
your passion and your interest is number one. Are you really going to enjoy the time you're spending in the hospital? Because in medicine, no matter what specialty you're in, you're going to be there for a lot of hours. And if you want a happy and fulfilled life, you're going to have to like what you're doing on a daily basis. Secondly, this is more of a problem that happens in the States rather than in Canada, but it's true and it's good to mention. The work ENT does overlaps quite a bit with other specialties. So for example, if you're looking at something like a reconstruction, ENT also does it, but so does plastic surgery. If you're removing tumors in the mouth, ENT does it, but oral surgeons also do the very same job. This can cause confusion within the hospital and also lead to lesser jobs in the ENT field. Now that I've talked about my personal pros and cons about ENT, I'd like to talk about my experience because I know many of you are interested. First of all, I got to scrub in for the very first time. As a kid who always wanted to become a doctor, this was something I'd envisioned and manifested since I was four years old. Donning those gloves and gown were the same to me as donning a coat of armor. I also witnessed a code blue for the very first time. Code blue means cardiac arrest. I was walking around the ICU with my preceptor when we started hearing beeping sounds. Then the speaker started shouting code blue, code blue. Since we were in the ICU, there were more than enough people to help. And I saw as 20 people responded to the individual who had arrested. Luckily, they were able to save them. And I'm glad that my first code blue was a success. And this brings us to the end of the video. We talked about my experience shadowing ENT and my personal pros and cons regarding the specialty. Comment below if you agree or disagree and tell us more about what you think. If you're an ENT surgeon who wants to share their experience, please email us and come on to the podcast. We'll see you next Monday.